Nobody wants a jihadist as president, says John Campbell. This is to tell you that uh, President Muhammad Buhari, who is responsible for the security challenges in Nigeria, has been classified as a jihadist for not going against the terrorists in the country. Despite the fact that the people who are also referred to as the jihadists, who are the Boko Haram, they have destroyed and terrorized every part of Nigeria. Now, before I start reading the news, if you're just watching us for the first time or you have been watching without subscribing, please do us a favor by hitting the subscribe button down below. In that way, that will notify you whenever I drop a new video. And I pray as you keep supporting our channel, God will keep sending people to support you. Amen. Now, this is it. A former United States ambassador to Nigeria, John Campbell, has said, Wari's leadership style created the belief among Nigerians from other parts of the country that he is a jihadist with a hidden agenda. According to Campbell, this belief is the fuel behind separatist agitations in the country, especially from the southern part of the country. Buhari had in 2013 berated the President Gulok Jonathan's administration for attacking Boko Haram instead of treating them the same way his predecessor, late Umar Yadra, treated Niger Delta militants. A situation he described as an heart of injustice against the North. Bowie, who at the same time spoke on a Liberty Radio program, Guest of the Week monitored in Kaduna said, What is responsible for the security situation in the country is caused by the activities of Niger Delta militant. Every Nigerian that is familiar with what is happening knows this. The Niger Delta militants started it all. What happened is that the governors of the Niger Delta region at the same time wanted to win their election so they recruited the youths and gave them guns and bullets and used them against their opponents to win elections by force. After the elections were over, they asked the boys to return the guns. The boys refused to return the guns. Because of that, the allowance that was being given to the youths by the governors during that time was stopped. So kidnapping becomes very rampant in the South South and the South East. They kidnapped people and were collecting money. On Boko Haram, he said, how did Boko Haram start? We know that their leader, Muhammad Yusuf, started his militants and the police couldn't control them. And the army was invited. He was arrested by soldiers and handed over to the police. The appropriate thing to do, according to the law, was for the police to carry out investigations and charge him to court for prosecution. But they killed him. His in-law was killed. They went and demolished their house. Because of that, his supporters resorted to what they are doing today. You see, in the case of the Niger Delta militant, the late president Umar Musaya Adras sent an aeroplane to bring them. He sat them down with them and discussed with them. They were cajoled and they were given money and they were granted amnesty. They were trained in some skills and were given employment. But the ones in the north were being killed and their houses were being demolished. There are different issues. What brought this? Is this injustice? Bowery's description of attack on Boko Haram as an act of injustice against the north drew criticisms with critics calling him a terrorist sympathizer. After winning election in 2015, Buhari then made it priority to rehabilitate repentant Boko Haram members where they are trained in some skills and then reintegrated back to the society or even employed them into the military. This was exactly what he accused the Jonathan government of not doing and described it as an heart of injustice against the North. There is also the recent case of Buhari's Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, who was accused of being an extremist and who should by no means be a part of a government fighting insecurity, especially Islamic extremists like Boko Haram. Calls to have Pantami removed from Buhari's cabinet failed. This alongside other issues including the failure to address issues of X-Men, bandits and attacks against Christians as painted in black, thus threatening the belief that the president supports all these atrocities with an agenda in mind. Now, in an article written by Mr. Campbell on the Council on Foreign Relations website, Campbell said, insecurity and perceptions of discrimination by the federal government have caused it to bubble up once again. Our security service 
tactics drive separatist sentiment. Religion for the overwhelmingly Christian evil, some of whom believe that the Buhari's government cooperate with or at least tolerate jihadists and Muslim bandits. All right, guys, um, that is it for the news now. Let me share my opinion with you. Yeah, my people, according to the former ambassador to Nigeria, John Campbell, who described President Muhammadu Buhari as a jihadist who has hidden agenda, the hidden truth about the Boko Haram that have destroyed Nigeria. And the fact is that the Buhari's administrations know who the real terrorists are. We now see these terrorists, they relax without fear of the government. And numbers of Christians have been brutally killed by Nigerian Islamic jihadists. These terror groups are relentless in their efforts to gain control over the country through the kidnapping and killing of innocent victims. Hundreds of children from Nigerian schools have also been kidnapped by these terror groups unless a ransom is paid. And it truth is that some of this crisis going on in Nigeria, 50% of it are caused by the British colonies because they are more concerned on resources in Nigeria. Now, what we have in Nigeria is people that are sponsoring terrorism, Buhari who is also among a terrorist sympathizer. This reminds me of a statement made by Buhari back in 2014 that attack against the Boko Haram terrorist is an attack against the North. And do you know that Buhari's government has been releasing Boko Haram terrorists from prisons. He even compensated them, integrated thousands of them into the military, also sending some overseas. The terror group are being given amnesty and empowered by the Nigerian government, which has now made Nigeria a country where terrorists are considered more important than innocent lives. I must tell you that Buhari knows what is doing because assuming the southern leaders can see well, but being self-centered is their problem. Now the question is, why must the Nigerian government wait for the Boko Haram terrorists to surrender without going after them, but they can easily go against this IPOB and other agitators. So this means that Sowedin cleans them from their crime against humanity. Once a terrorist is always a terrorist. That is why we have them everywhere. They are in the Nigerian army, they are even in the police. That is why I'll keep saying that some of these foreign countries have caused most problems surfacing Nigeria. Yeah, because all of these killing reports, either the killings from the Fulani Edsmen, the Boko Haram terrorists, they see everything they see the report. Likewise, so many reports on killings of the Christians in a situation where um, the Christians are not allowed to perform their religious rites in northern region. These terror groups called the jihadists will kidnap by force and kill any Christians that refuses to accept their religion. Did you know that the next jihadists are sent thousands of Christians to early grave? No freedom of performing their religious rites and most of them will even disguise in order not to get killed. And the truth of the matter is that people who had supported Buhari's administration since 2015 are now regretting. They never thought that this current Buhari's administration would be a total failure. Alright guys, um, that is it for you all. I want to thank you for your support on this channel. It's not taken for granted. And please don't forget to share your thoughts on the comment section below. After watching, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share. See you next time till I come your way. Bye, bye-bye.